Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make a fabric sewing machine. You can use this sewing machine as a decoration or as a toy or even as a cushion. I got the idea for this from an art gallery display that I saw years and years ago. In that display were a series of household items that were made from fabric, including a sewing machine, and I just thought that would be a really cool project to do. In order to follow along, you will need the following. In terms of the fabrics, I personally used some white cotton calico, although I would recommend that you use something a bit heavier, perhaps like a canvas. I also used a pink woven cotton and a floral poly cotton. For the thread, I used white polyester thread. For the embroidery floss, I used pink and black. And for the yarn, I used super chunky chenille yarn in red. Make sure that any glue that you use is fast and clear drying and is suitable to use with fabrics. I personally used UHU or Purpose Adhesive. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is design your project. You can use any paper for this, but something with a printed grid on it does make it a little bit easier. You just need to draw the basic outline of the sewing machine, plus any details that you want to replicate. This was the sewing machine that I wanted to replicate and I drew it out actual size or thereabouts on an A3 piece of paper. You don't have to go into as much detail as I have and as you'll notice I did leave most of these details off the finished sewing machine. Once you've finished your drawing you'll likely want to make a list of the parts that you want to make. Here you can see my list as an example which includes the presser foot, the strap, the spool of thread and the screen. Then cut along the outline that you've drawn out to give you the basic template for the body. You'll then want to place this template onto the fabric you're using for the front of the plushie, making sure that the fabric is right side up. Then draw around it using your fabric pen. You'll notice that I don't draw around the presser foot and the dial on the right hand side and that's because I'll be adding those separately later on. Then use a ruler to add a seam allowance of half an inch all the way around. Then cut along this outer line like so. To add a differently coloured section, place the fabric over your paper template and trace the shape you would like. In this case, I'm using some lightweight pink cotton to make a pink panel on the right hand side of the machine. Add half an inch around the outside, as we did before. And then cut along this outer line. Cut notches in the corners to reduce bulk and then iron all four sides to the back, making sure to fold along the lines that you've drawn. And here you can see the result. Just make sure that the fabric overlaps neatly at the corners, as you can see here. Place this panel in position, right side up and attach it to the white fabric underneath using blanket stitch all the way around the edge. I used a regular hand sewing needle to do this plus three strands of some pink embroidery floss. I'm just showing you the basic method of the blanket stitch here but if you want a proper lesson or a slower demo I have a separate video all about it. And once you've stitched all the way around, it should look like this. Next, we're going to make the two circular dials, one for the front and one for the side. For each dial, you'll need two circles of the white fabric, two and a half inches in diameter, plus a strip of the same fabric measuring eight and a half inches by one inch. 
Use sewing pins to attach the strip to one of the circles, making sure that the fabrics are right sides together. Here you can see how that looks, from the front and from the back. Then using a quarter inch seam allowance, backstitch around the edge of the circle, as well as along the seam where the ends of the strip meet. Again I'm showing the process of the backstitch, but if you want a lesson or a slower demo, I have a separate video all about it. The basic concept is that you move two stitches forward and come up through the fabric and then move one stitch back and go down through the fabric again and just repeat that over and over. You then need to pin the second circle to the top of this same strip, again with right sides together. Then backstitch around the edge in the same way as before, except this time you need to leave a gap at least one and a half inches long. Once you've done that, turn the disc right side out, fill it with stuffing, and then close up the gap using the invisible stitch. Again, I have a separate video all about the invisible stitch if you'd like to learn more. Repeat the same again so you'll end up with two of these dials. The next step is my favourite bit and it's where we make the presser foot. So first, cut out a rectangle of silver leatherette measuring 3 by 5 inches. Add some glue and roll it up to make a rod that's 3 inches high. Then cut out two rectangles for the foot, each measuring 1.5 inches by 1 inch. Then place them together back to back and cut out a notch. On one of these pieces, trace around the rolled up leatherette and then cut this section out. Glue the two foot pieces together back to back. And then glue the end of the rolled up section into place. For the needle, cut out a couple of thin strips about two and a half inches long. Glue them together back to back and then when the glue is dry cut out a needle shape. You'll also need to cut out a rectangle measuring one and a half by two and a quarter inches. Then add some glue and roll it up. Make sure there's a gap in the centre of this tube to fit the needle. Then glue the needle inside. Next, glue this needle section to the front of the presser foot section, like so. And finally, I made a little tab by cutting out a rectangle measuring 2 inches by half an inch gluing it into a loop and then attaching it slightly above the needle. Please note that I ended up cutting about one inch off the top of this foot later on and moving the tab further down. This is because I underestimated how much the stuffing would decrease the gap between the top and the bottom of the machine. So you might want to hold off attaching the tab until later on when you know how high this presser foot needs to be. As I mentioned previously, I'm using a lightweight fabric for the main body of my sewing machine and I recommended that you use something a little bit thicker. Because I was worried about my fabric being a bit too thin to be durable enough, I cut out another layer of the front piece, pinned it to the back of my current piece, 
then sewed just outside the seam allowance line all the way around. You likely won't have to do this, but it's an option if you think you need it. Then place your front piece of fabric onto the fabric you're using for the back, so that the back fabric is face down. Then trace around the outside. Cut along this line, and that will give you a back piece the same size as the front piece, but there'll be a mirror image of each other. For the screen, cut out a piece of pink felt measuring one and a quarter by two and a half inches, plus a piece of the silver leatherette measuring three quarters of an inch by two inches. You can sew these on, but I just glued them. Then you'll need to seek out some buttons for your design. I just used four plastic ones in different colours. Sew them into position on the front piece of your fabric. Note that if you use buttons, this toy won't be suitable for very young children, so you could embroider these details on instead. Next, use three strands of black embroidery floss to add four different stitch options to the pink panel on the front. I just went for it, to be honest, but you could instead draw out the design first with your fabric pen. The next step is to make the spool. To do this, first cut out two circles from white felt, each measuring two inches in diameter. Then cut out a rectangle measuring two and a half by three inches. Add some glue and roll it up to give you a rod that's three inches tall. Cut out another rectangle, this time measuring two by two and a half inches. Form this into a tube with a slight overlap and glue it in place. This tube should fit loosely over the felt rod that you've just made. Cut out two felt strips, each measuring one and three quarters by half an inch. Then glue these over the top of one end of the tube so they're perpendicular to each other. This is just to block off one end of the tube. Use your scissors to cut across into one of the circle shapes and push through the blocked end of the tube. Glue this circle in place. Then glue the other circle to the other end of the tube and this completes your spool. Lastly, glue the end of your yarn to the top of the spool, like so. Then wrap it around the centre and glue it again at the bottom. Once the glue dries, you can then continue wrapping the yarn around the spool as much as you like. Measure the circumference of your front piece of fabric, then make a strip of fabric this long, plus a few inches extra for the seam allowance and to make absolutely sure you have enough fabric. My strip ended up being about 74 inches long. As you can see, I had to sew together two strips to get a strip that was long enough. The width that I chose for the strip was five and a half inches. Because I'm using half an inch seam allowance, the plushie ended up being four and a half inches wide. If you want a sturdier shape, feel free to make it wider. Take this opportunity to iron the front and back pieces and the side strip. Also press open any seams you've created on that side strip. You then need to pin this side strip all around the circumference of the front piece, making sure the right sides are together. You'll likely want to use more sewing pins on the sharper curves. In order to hold the yarn onto the sewing machine, you'll need a couple of tabs. These are just rectangles of fabric around two inches long, folded into thin strips, 
and sewn lengthwise. You'll need to make two of these tabs in the white fabric. You'll need to fold these tabs in half and position them at the top of the front piece, between the front and the side. Then pin them in place. Then you need to sew along this pinned edge using a half inch seam allowance. I just used the default straight stitch on my sewing machine. Take it slow around the curves, removing the pins as you go. Also keep checking that your fabric is out of the way so that you don't sew over anything you shouldn't by accident. At this point you want to add the two dials to the machine and the leather strap. In order to attach a dial, just make a few stitches in the centre. You'll need to add a dial on the front and one on the side. To make the strap, cut out a rounded strip of leather about 5 inches by 1 inch. Then use an awl to make two holes at each end. This isn't vital, but it just makes it easier for your needle to go through the leather. Then sew this strap onto the side strip at the top. I used pink embroidery floss to do this. And then it's time to complete the main body of the machine. So pin the back piece of fabric to the side piece all the way around making sure that the right sides of the fabrics are all still facing each other. Leave a good size gap along the bottom edge, as we'll need this gap for adding stuffing later on. Then sew along this pinned edge as you did before, remembering to leave that gap. Then turn this right side out. I forgot to do this, but before you turn it right side out, you'll probably want to remove any excess bulk of fabric along the seams, particularly at the corners. You may also want to snip the seams on a concave curve and cut out notches from the seam on the convex curves. This isn't vital, but the seams will likely be a little bit smoother if you do this. Then it's time to add plenty of stuffing to the inside until it's firm enough to stand. Before you fill the base with stuffing, you'll want to consider whether you want a weighted base. This depends on how you're going to use the sewing machine. For instance, if you're using it decoratively or as a cushion, you probably don't need a weighted base. However, if you're using it as a toy, you probably will do. I personally just made a couple of pouches and filled them with plastic pellets, just to weigh down each side of the base. However, if you want a more stable toy, you might want to add something flat and stiff in the base, such as a thin piece of wood. This will keep it flat against the table. You'll probably also want to add even more weight, perhaps filling the base with beanbag beans or rice. Once you've added the weight of your choice, pin the gap that you've left, and then sew it up using the invisible stitch. And here you can see the main body shape is complete. Now we need to attach the spool. So clip a small hole where you want to attach it, then push the felt rod that you made earlier into this hole. You want to push it in about half an inch, and then sew this in place around the outside using the invisible stitch. Then just push the spool onto this rod. and feed the yarn through the tabs. Then to attach the foot, you make another hole in the fabric, this time big enough for the presser foot section. Then push the rolled up sections into the hole and secure it with the invisible stitch. As I said previously, you might need to reduce the height of the presser foot.
And then that's it. You've now completed your squishy sewing machine. I really hope you enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.